Hi everyone, thank you for joining in for Clinico and Coffee today. Um, I will get started importantly with some coffee. I haven't had one yet for the day, so I'm keen to get that going. Um, if you haven't been to one of these before, so you can post any questions you have for me in the comment section on YouTube here, and I'll be happy to answer them as we go along. It can be comments about ways you're using Clinico, um, things you want to know about Clinico, plans for future, anything about our company or whatever else. I'm founder of Clinico and happy to just answer anything that you want to throw at me. <clears throat> I've also got for this session, we did put out a form uh, before we started this live stream to see if people had questions they wanted to send in advance in case they weren't able to make it. So I have some of those that I'll go through in the session today as well. Um, if you did put in a question and I'm not able to get to it because we had quite a lot, please do just reach out to our support team via the chat on our website or chat within Clinico or you can email support at clinico.com and they'll be able to help you if it's something I didn't get to today. So um, the coffee I'm gonna brew Today, it's one from Industry Beans. I'll see if I can get that in focus for you. So it's a cafe in Melbourne called Industry Beans, and this particular one is a, a geisha variety coffee from Colombia. It's very fruity and floral, I would describe it as. So the method I'm using to make coffee, by the way, is V60, so it's a pour over filter coffee. This is the V60 here and I'll walk through briefly uh, what I'm doing with the coffee while I make it as um, questions start to come in and I can start answering those. But for this particular coffee, I'm weighing out 28 grams of coffee to brew and I'm gonna use 400 ml of water. It's a stronger ratio than I would normally use. I've found for this coffee that I've been brewing already, um, it's got a, like a lighter taste and flavor, maybe it's a lighter roast, but a little bit heavier, heavier dose has made the coffee better. So I'm doing 28 grams coffee to 400 ml and a fairly coarse grind to do a somewhat low extraction of it. Probably should have warned about the noise, but too late for that. I see we've got people from all over the place, a lot of people from Australia. We've got from Seattle. Seattle is a big coffee place. I've got some filter paper that I'm just putting in here. Does anyone here um, that's watching, does anyone make pour over coffee like V60 or otherwise? I'm just wetting the paper to rinse it and also heat up the V60 and the jug before doing a brew. And for those interested in the coffee part, I've got the water at 90 degrees which is lower than I would do as a standard brew. I would say a standard one's usually 95 to 97 degrees. But again, because I find this one is better with a lower extraction and higher dose, so I'm doing a, a lower temperature as well. I'll just empty the water from here. So on the coffee front, question from Pete about a paper filter versus a metal filter. So the biggest difference I find with a, a metal filter, and I'll see if I've got an example actually of a different um, filter type here. So here's one example. This is a, a metal filter that you can use. Again, I'll see if I can get that to focus in for you. That's a metal filter you can use in the V60 rather than putting the paper in, but it goes a lot faster. So because the, the holes in this are bigger, it brews a lot faster and it's hard to get a slow brew without going super fine on the coffee. And then you risk over extracting it by having the, the coffee grind so fine, or um, it can even be difficult to extract it enough because of how fast it goes. So I find it's like very difficult to get a good brew with it. One thing I have found, and I'm gonna duck away down here for a second to have some different coffee papers here. If anyone's using V60, there is two uh, kind of main types of papers you can buy. This is the one that I strongly prefer. It comes in a box and uh, a smaller amount of them versus the larger packs that you get in the plastic. They're actually quite a different um, paper. And the ones that come in the plastic 
Um, they have a slightly worse taste and also they brew a lot slower and I find it's hard to get a good brew from it. So I see some Clinico questions coming in, so don't fear, I will get to those in just a second. Um, like I said, I haven't had a coffee yet today, so I'll answer them a lot better once, once I have one in my hand. So I'm just doing the bloom for the coffee at the moment. I'll pour 100 ml, so a quarter of the water that I'm going to do, and that's to release the gases from the coffee. And I'll agitate it with a spoon, just to mix it through and get all that gas released from it before the rest of it brews. And then I can start pouring the main part. Someone asking if we're talking about Clinico, we definitely are. I'm just getting my coffee ready first and then I'll dive into all those questions for you. There's a request for a Clinico hoodie because it's cold in New Zealand. We, um, we, did, we did make these ones for the team at one point and they went really fast. Everyone was quite a fan of them. If we do another round of hoodies, maybe we can find a competition or something <clears throat> that we can put out there for people to win some. I think that would be good. All right, that's the water done. So I can just wait for that to finish brewing. Just going to quickly have a look through these questions. <clears throat> so there's a question from um, Jeffrey Fong, and he's asking about a facility to take deposits prior to treatment or telehealth sessions currently in the future. So at the moment, we only have the way um, which is to collect the sort of full payment for a session at the time of making the booking, not just a deposit. And I know that can be problematic. It looks like you might be an osteopath, Jeffrey. So that can be a problem where you can't necessarily take payment ahead of time um, to, because you might be doing high caps or, or Medicare or something like that at the time of the appointment, which can't be paid in advance. So at the moment, we don't have anything to solve that. I know it's something that um, the main company that we do payments integration with, and particularly high caps and Medicare is Medipass. And I know they've talked about solutions. And I also know there's a, at least a couple of them in the chat here. Um, so maybe one of them could just respond to Jeffrey, um, your thoughts on that. If we do it, it would be via a mechanism that um, Medipass makes available to us. And they could probably mention that in the chat for you. So a question about secure messaging from Suzanne, <clears throat> and this is one, um, it's one that I've been sort of looking into more again recently, just gonna get rid of this bit of coffee here. <clears throat> so on the secure messaging front, so what we're referring to here particularly, I don't know if it's like more of an Australian term, how we roll up the term secure messaging, but we're referring to the ability to send and receive documents or images to other healthcare practitioners in a secure way. <clears throat> it could be like radiology results, it could be referral letters, all sorts of things that we want to send in a secure way where email is not necessarily deemed to be. So there's companies in Australia like HealthLink and Argus that are big providers of it. The problem we have and the problem we've had for quite a long time is that there's a lot of providers that do se secure messaging and they, they're not compatible with each other. So if you want to send at the moment, and this is particularly in Australia, if you want to send a message to a, a doctor, you need to know which system they're using and you need to send it via their system and there's a number of them. So in order to have that in Clinico, we need to connect to the majority to get good enough coverage and then we need some sort of directory that can look up and find the appropriate place for it to go and use the right system to send it. So we haven't done so so far because of that complexity and I am personally optimistic that there's improvements made to it where perhaps we do get uh, you know, a combined directory even that allows us to know where to send it and hopefully a standard that lets to send from one system to another as well. I know that the digital health agency have talked about getting involved in secure messaging, but I haven't seen anything come to fruition for it. I chatted to a company recently that looks like a sort of modern company tackling this area but that was more um, chat based. So kind of at the moment, we're still a little bit wait and see. I hope that um, you know, in Australia and maybe globally, 
there's more standards brought out that do make them compatible and easier to send between and we'd be really keen to do because it's functionality we want to have um, but I think until there's progress we would either need to build it or, or work you know back in a way that I don't think is ideal and we don't have plans to build anytime soon and we're hoping that someone does uh, move it forward so I would say it's something we will tackle but right now there's been some things that have held us up and it, it hasn't been something we've jumped into yet I'm not sure if that um if that answers your question well enough, Suzanne, I, I know you say you're using GoFax at the moment. Um, we have been looking at doing a bit better integration with GoFax rather than the emails like you do at the moment. And that's a possibility to come in future as well. So I've got a question from Andrew about a follow-up SMS after a treatment, a customizable follow-up SMS. Um, that they can do because they do it manually <clears throat> at the moment and um, it's a big boost for them so they want to automate that. Um, so it's something that, again we don't have plans to do in the near future and there are systems around that can do that for you Andrew. There's integrations, third party integrations that have been built that connect to Clinico and automate this process. There's Clinic apps that um, has been integrated with Clinico for quite some time now and it handles this kind of automated communication like you mentioned. And there's a newer one that's just been released called Pep Talker as well um, that's come out that does this type of thing too. There, um, there may be others that are um, forgetting, um, but they're the two main ones that come to mind. And perhaps um, if you're interested, you could just ask in the chat and maybe I know Martina from our team who's in the chat helping out might drop a link to those two if you wanted to be able to find them. So um, at this stage, um, it's not something we're planning to do. Uh, and there is other alternatives out there that let you um, achieve the same result. We also did have another question actually while I, I recall, there was one of the questions that came in uh, before the session on this similar type topic and was asking about emails and that would be the same answer for this as well is that we don't have an after appointment email at the moment, um, no short term plans to do so and there's a couple of other systems that allow you to do it that might be um, well suited for the purpose. So there's a question about someone that's um, got, uh, this is from Aaron, and they have a GP that wants to join their practice and they're wondering about integrating with MIMS or eScripts uh, to become GP friendly. So um, MIMS, if I'm not mistaken, that's the one that has all the information about all the drugs and prescriptions. Aaron, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Um, if so, I did have a chat to them about a potential integration with it. Um, because it's quite a niche for us, because we don't really have uh, GPs using Clinico, it's hard to prioritize the time to work on something that helps a select few. Um, so it's not that we rule it out, and I did have a chat with um, Mims about it, um, but I also saw that like it kind of works not too different when it's standalone. So if you have a subscription to Mims and you have the website open in a different tab and look it up, um, the, you know, the ability of the integration into Clinico, it, it, it doesn't change the workflow you can do. You can use it already. You could copy paste stuff in, you can search the database. It's just whether or not it's right in Clinico or not. So I'm not sure that that difference anyway, unless there's a deeper integration you're thinking, I'm not sure that difference uh, of sort of convenience would help us get it to the top when it's also for a portion of our customers. So I hope, um, I hope that gives you enough info and let me know in the comments if there's more to it you want to discuss about that. So Arthur uh, asking about the forms being able to modify like a consent form where once generated it could be modified with specific requirements for a procedure. So you could have multiple forms, Arthur, like multiple templates. I don't think we're going to allow for a specific template that's being generated for a patient to be editable, but you could uh, make a copy of a form and then have different versions of it for different things. And you could even tie those different versions to different appointment types so they automatically go out. Um, you know, depending on what type of appointment it is. But I think you're going to need multiple templates set up in advance to achieve that. Got a question from Emma about um, how have we gone with integrating um, gift voucher sales into Clinico? 
um, after we spoke about them. So um, this one we haven't made progress on yet. So I think when we chatted last time about it, um, we really wanted to move it up in the priority list because we could see how it's relevant during COVID times. You know, if people are having trouble to, um, you know, particularly in the massage field, having trouble to have people come in, but perhaps they could still sell gift vouchers um, to generate a source of income for, you know, delaying those treatments. Um, we want to do it, we see the value in it, we know that it's relevant right now, but we just haven't found someone to be able to shift across and do. There's quite a few big things still on the go and we just um, haven't found someone to get to it yet. So I would say um, no progress yet, but still we like highly rate that task and would like to get to it. I'm just gonna also um, pull up the list of questions that came in in advance of time and jump through a few of those. I know there were some telehealth questions that came in uh, that I wanted to jump into. So one question is, um, they wanna see the telehealth video. If you hear beeping, by the way, that'll be um, one of my kettles here. So um, they wanna see the telehealth video, but also be able to type in a patient note at the same time. So those that have been following our plans with it might know that we do plan to bring in treatment notes underneath the video on the same screen that you use in telehealth. And we've made some progress towards it by releasing um, medical alerts that appear underneath that screen right now. And there's more work going on to bring the treatment notes into that place as well. In the meantime, you can use the picture in picture feature that we have in telehealth, which pops out the video and sort of floats on top of your screen. So you can actually do that right now and then have a separate tab in Clinico. Don't close your telehealth window, but a separate tab in Clinico that you go across to to write your notes. And with the picture in picture feature, their video will still stay on top of the screen and sort of float above it. One thing of note um, with the medical alerts and the um, treatment notes that are going to appear underneath is something that um, we, we think was like a, a good spot during the development is we are going to be um, hiding that information off your telehealth page if you do screen sharing. So if you're doing a telehealth consult and you click the screen share button, the medical alerts and the notes that you're writing below will disappear. And that's because you're instantly gonna be showing your screen back to the person on the other end. And quite likely there's things on that screen that they shouldn't be seeing. So with the way we implement it, they will get hidden on a screen share, but you'll have the option to show them again, you know, actively if you want, or again, you could have it on a, a different tab to, to work through. Um, so uh, a common one we get for telehealth actually is the ability to block out certain types uh, of appointments for certain days or certain times of the day. Now telehealth has probably ramped up the request for this, but it's been a, a request that's been around for a long time now. Um, it's something we want to do. Again, it's one we don't have progress on and I'm not sure if it's gonna come about before we get to do a bit of a redo of the calendar or not. So one of the problems or constraints we have with our calendar right now is it doesn't let you choose a different set of hours to work in a few months time or to look back a few months time and what hours was I working then compared to now. And we need to do a bit of a, a rejig behind the scenes to change how the, the calendar operates. And I think that this change is gonna wait until that's done. And I, I'm not sure the time frame on that. So this is the ability to allocate set times for um, different appointment types, you know, primarily telehealth in this case. One thing of note, I have seen that some people from our support team have been suggesting some workarounds that are okay. Uh, and one of them is to have a different location or business in Clinico that's allocated to a different type of appointment and having a separate schedule uh, used there. So, it, you know, it's a little clunky and it's not the ideal way we would like it to be handled. Um, but I think there is a path forward if you're desperate for that now. And that's something you could reach out to our support team and ask them about if you need more info on it. Or I don't know, um, you know if anyone in our team that's in the chat, if there is um, any information we have on it, you know, handy a guide or something, but I don't think so. Uh, I think probably you could reach out to us um, to have a talk about that. Um, I've got some more questions on forms. I don't know if these will be any that we've covered so far. So um, we have uh, someone wrote in Gloria who said they've got a client registration form. However, it comes up for every appointment and they don't need it always. So this is a case that um, you probably need to be setting up different appointment reminders or confirmation emails per appointment type. So if you have in Clinico an initial consultation, that's the first, you know, they're, they're 
first time they're going to see you in your clinic and then maybe you have a standard consultation which is the ongoing repeated one that comes later um, that could be a good idea for a start that means you can have a different time you might need an hour for their first appointment and 30 minutes for the follow-up appointments and also it designates on the on the calendar so you know this is the first time you're seeing them now if you do that and you go into your reminders and confirmations area in settings where you've got the templates and you do different templates uh, set up. So one that is a, a first time person template and one that is the repeat one. Now you can change the information in it so that the first time they get your intake form and the repeat times you could have them not or maybe you know, you'll still always want to send out a COVID screener at the moment. But for the first one you do a COVID screener and the intake form or something along those lines. So it's a matter of setting up multiple templates in the confirmation, uh, confirmations and reminders area and then linking them to the different appointment types. And it should solve the problem that Gloria was writing in about. And again, if this is something that you're not using in your clinics, I have seen a, a few clinics that I talked to recently that weren't doing so and were just using our standard templates. And I think there's a lot of value you could get from having different templates. You can put custom information into these, what to expect from an appointment, things to bring, whatever it might be. So if you're not already doing these different, particularly the email confirmation that can go out as soon as an appointment's booked. If you're not already doing different ones for different type of appointments, could be something to consider. Um, someone else was just saying that on their diary, when they do have the forms that go out, some of them are greyed out and they can't actually click on them. That would be that the patient hasn't completed the form yet. It'll just be clickable once the patient has submitted their results to the form that's gone through. One other thing that I do know comes up with the forms um, that hasn't been mentioned here. Hello now, lost my train of thought. I'll come back to it. Um, there's one more question here that we did have about using the forms if they're not using online bookings. So someone was asking if they're not using online bookings, can they still use our forms? And the answer is absolutely yes, because the forms themselves tie into these confirmation emails primarily that get sent out automatically on appointment creation. It doesn't matter if it's an online booking or not, they'll still go out uh, no matter what. So you can use them with online bookings, but you can use them um, without as well. Um, so a question from Amy coming up in the comments about um, merging the form information into the patient details page. Um, so I talked about this a little bit in the previous Clinico and Coffee session, um, but yes, and yes, we're working on this one right now. So there'll be times where I say, yes, I think this is a really good idea, but we're not working on it right now. And those, it's hard to predict a time frame for because until someone actually grabs the work and begins on it, partly we don't know what's required to do the task. There's a lot of learning about a task as we dive into it and try to actually implement it. That's when we learn the most about what we need to do and get an idea of the scope of the task. But also we're not quite sure when it gets picked up yet. In this case, integrating the patient form into the details page, people are working on it right now. The design work was all completed and the development has started. Um, there's still, I would say when, when we look at a task and we think about like where we're at with how much we know what this task needs to do and how much have we solved, we're not over the, the hump yet. So there's still things that we need to make decisions on. We need to still work out some of the verification of the patient and how confident we are to get that information and put it in. What we do with information that's already in the patient record as far as overriding, merging, or, or what we do on that front. There's still some of those decisions being made, but the actual interface in the software is designed, there's people working on it and the, the functionality is happening. So it, it means it won't be too far away. We have a question from someone that came in uh, from Liz that asked about consolidating invoices. Um, so if they see someone twice a week and only want to send them one invoice, how do they do that? So the mechanism we have to handle that in Clinico is that you would create an invoice per session still because an invoice relates to an appointment. And then you can do an account statement from in the patient page that can roll up a number of invoices and, and put them all together to be sent out. And you can, I think, even rename if you don't want it called an account statement, you can rename it to whatever you want it to be in there. So still make an invoice per appointment, but then use the account statement to roll them up weekly, monthly, whatever it is you need to send on to them for payment. Um, Frederick from New Zealand sent in a question which was can I make a quote in Clinico so it looks like an invoice but it's not going to go across to zero and it's treated differently. 
Um, we don't have any plans for this right now. Um, honestly, we haven't put really any consideration into it. I think that it makes sense. And if I was to think of where should Clinico be in five years time, it should have that in it. But I don't think it's going to float to the top as one of the near things we work on. And we haven't, you know, put real consideration into it. So while uh, I'd say on face value, it makes sense and probably we should do. Um, it would need some more thought. And I'm not quite sure the ramifications of that at the moment. Um, what have we got? Then I've got some... Uh, miscellaneous questions so on a bunch of different topics um, we have um, someone wants to know about the letters the letters that you can send to doctors if you can put a table in it I guess they would want to put some results or something in a table um, we don't have we don't have that right now and I know that there was some work being done some time ago on the formatting uh, options for letters and also treatment notes I think that they're gonna or well, they will get enhanced that we will bring more options into them tables would make sense to do but I know they're tricky to actually develop, so I'm not sure that it will be in the first run of the formatted improvements, but um, I, I can't see why not. I think that it should be in there and it's just gonna be a matter of um, how it is to implement it. So there's a question about having a field for um, mum and dad's names for children or alternatively next of kin. Um, so it depends what this wants to be used for. We do have relationships in Clinico where you can actually have uh, the patient records for the different people and you can link to them together and talk about this is the father, the mother, whatever it might be. And that'll be stored in there, but it does require a record for those other people to do so. Uh, probably I would need to know a little more information on the purpose or how it's to be used um, to know um, whether or not that's something we would change. Um, someone's asking about a letter for a merge field for a case start and end date. Um, that makes sense. We would need to add the way the letters work at the moment for any placeholder you want available, you need to link a record to it. So we would need to be able to link a case to the letter and then those placeholders could appear for cases. I think that's one if someone could make a note for me from our team, um, just to have a look at that later, I'll have a look into it. But uh, definitely feasible, Renee, and it makes sense to have. The so question if we have plans, this is from Noel in Lebanon, do we have plans to um, add a loyalty program? So that's you know, an ability for them to run a loyalty program, I recall from the question, so that they can reward um, long-term you know, patients and clients. Um, we don't have current plans to do so. Again, it's one of those things that makes sense and I could see it being in there, but no initial plans. Probably I would say in the short term, you'd want to have a look at some sort of um, other application that could work nicely aside, alongside Clinico to achieve that result. Um, and, you know, possibly in future we do it. I, it makes sense. I just, again, don't think that's going to be one that's, you know, too soon for us. I've um, got a follow-up question uh, about um, families for them to share an invoicing account so someone can pay for their kids or something, I guess, if they all come in. Um, that's something that is on our to-dos. Uh, I'm not too sure how far away that one is, but definitely plans that are handle um, family payments. So that would, um, would be coming. I assume that's Kira that asked it. Um, someone's asking, uh, Seb from England was asking about two things. One was on the patient's page when they're scrolling down in a treatment note, they would like it if it scrolled independently of the previous notes so they could see them. Um, I, I know there's some redesign plans coming for that treatment notes patient page. Um, not major, but so, some improvements to it. I'm not sure if that's in there or not. And I can check in and see if that has any implications or would make sense to do. <coughs> They also asked about opening two notes at once um, that they might be recording. So um, that's something probably at the moment you would just need to handle with uh, browser tabs. So you know one of the advantages to being a web-based system like Clinico is, and if you're not using this, you might find some advantages. It's not like a Windows app on your computer where there's just one of them and that's it. You can open up Clinico in your browser and then you can open up multiple tabs in your browser and have different pages of Clinico open. So if you're not already, you might want to always leave the appointments calendar open in one tab and then have your notes you're writing or other things open in separate tabs. And one way to actually achieve it is whenever you go to open a page in Clinico, if you're on Mac, just hold down command and then click the link you're going to and that will open it in a new tab. 
or if you're on Windows, you hold Control and click, and that will open that in a new tab. So that's a good way if you want to have two different notes open, you could have them in two separate tabs, you could be flicking between them, or you could even split up your screen and have Clinico open side by side in two different tabs and be able to see whatever you want uh, in that way. And also our side navigation is collapsible back to icons, so it can be made quite small. So if you're going to put two Clinico windows side by side, you can compact the navigation a little bit and Clinico is designed to work as you resize your browser. So if you have it wide or really small, it'll just adjust automatically. There's nothing stopping you having a few open next to each other. And you could probably open tens of them if you liked, but it might get messy on your computer, but it won't have any impact to Clinico. You can have uh, as many as you like like that. So Renee just had a question about writing a letter and seeing the patient notes. So you'd use this exact approach, Renee. Um, you could just go through and have separate tabs and either separate them and see them both or, you know, tab in between. Someone asking about using a stylus to do handwritten notes in Clinico Notes. This is one that comes up a little bit and also people ask about dictation, which has got a kind of similar answer. And that is Clinico doesn't offer it itself natively, but there's plenty of apps and things that will help you to do it. So you can, if you're using your phone, for example, you could be using the microphone option on the keyboard to dictate and that would go into the the field because it's just effectively like your keyboard doing it or on a like a tablet or a phone you could download a separate keyboard that is a handwriting keyboard and then when you write on it that's going to transcribe the text and put it into the fields in Clinico for you and on your computers <clears throat> there's definitely dictation options that you can install on your computer that would do similar and probably handwriting as well the only caveat I have for any of these is you need to have a look at the privacy statements of the company that you're using. You need to check if the things that you're writing are going back to their servers and being stored because you're probably putting patient information here. You want to make sure that it's not going anywhere that would not be compliant with your regulations. So there's plenty of ways to achieve handwriting and dictation uh, using your device's features, but um, you do need to make sure that the compliance and privacy part of it um, is taken care of. Um, we had Fiona in Melbourne asking for an update um, for Stripe uh, payments. Um, so that was something that we're working on, the ability um, to collect payment, not just in online bookings up front, but be also be able to send um, you know, an email afterwards with payment detail links. So we're actually working on two parts for this now. So we're doing with Stripe, like we'd mentioned before, to send a, a payment link with the invoice. But we're also doing some enhancements to the MediPass integration that focuses around collecting credit card payments, not just high caps or Medicare. And that would be both in-app and also the same mechanism of sending out uh, an, an email link or something like that to do. So there'll be a couple of options coming up to collect credit card payments through Clinico. So I have a question that's um, come through in advance. And this is a question that's come up in a few Clinico and Coffee sessions where I'm suspicious the, the source of it, that it could be someone uh, that, that I know in the team that does. But the question is, do I have any tips on cutting my hair at home? I'm worried I'll end up with a mullet, um, which as you might be able to tell from my hair is obviously a, a risk you could take. Um, so I'm not the person to give you tips for it. Um, it may have stemmed from the fact that I tried to give myself a haircut early on and thought that it would be easier just to do the parts I could see and not get to the back, which is why I have um, that bit of hair poking out the back. But um, for tips on that, I would say I'm not your person. Um, so there's a... Oh, there's a question to do with letters and um, treatment notes with how can they send them directly out to their patients? So they want to have a way to perhaps email a treatment uh, note or a management plan or something out of Clinico directly to a patient. So I know that a lot of people just do the export to PDF and do it manually. And that's something that we could help to save some time with. The trouble we have with it is that um, in a lot of places, email is not deemed secure. It's not considered an appropriate way to send medical information. And mostly that stems from the fact that even though from the Clinico side, we send encrypted emails, the way email works is if the receiver doesn't receive encrypted emails, it'll fall back to not encrypted. So it's not guaranteed to be secure or stay encrypted. 
And because of that, um, in, in many countries, it's like not allowed to send medical information via email. And if we build that into Clinico, we will kind of encourage that behavior and no doubt a lot more people would start doing it. So it's a tricky one because I know people do it already. And I, there's also not really a better way or an easy way to get it to your patient as well. But I think that we, we couldn't in good conscience just introduce that feature without solving the problem in a bit bigger way and have some sort of secure message go uh, to your patients rather than just email. <clears throat> and um, I see a comment from Martina, mullet, show and tell. So there's, a, there's a very good reason why I wear a beanie now in these sessions that I do. It's not just that it's super cold here. Um, will Clinico integrate with QuickBooks? Um, so QuickBooks and accounting system, you know, we have an integration with Xero. Um, we have spoken with QuickBooks and it is something that's a possibility, but uh, probably with no urgency. We do have the integration with Xero that's an option. And also there is workarounds where you can just export your information to spreadsheets and import them into QuickBooks or MYOB or wherever it is that you need it. So um, at the moment, I would say probably it, it just won't float to the top of our priority list anytime soon. That was one from Rachel in Tamworth. Um, so I, I wouldn't rule out, but um, I don't think it's going to be in the next you know, year or so at least. I'm just going to check in. Uh, I've gone through the ones that came in advance. I'll check in with some of the uh, other ones that have come in the comments now. Um, <clears throat> so I do see another one from Keith um, there about the family billing. Um, definitely when it comes time that we can um, tackle that and try to handle, we'll be able to record who made the payment as well um, to avoid that double billing for you. Um, so Renee saying the ability to um, tab and change font sizes formatting in letters, um, it'll absolutely come. So we'll introduce uh, 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 what you see is what you get type editor, presumably a, a good one that allows you to do all the formatting that you're used to, at least, you know, the basic formatting and have that appear nicer in the letters. I think that, you know, letters are a bit weak on the formatting front at the moment. You can't do a lot with them and the, the way they print out isn't the tidiest. So it needs an improvement. I'm not sure um, when that occurs, but definitely it will come. <clears throat> so Kira was asking about an email button to send to the GP. So I think um, kind of same as what I covered just before, um, why we have trouble to do. But that said, you can actually do a letter to the GP at the moment, because when you create a letter, if you add a, like a, a contact, a doctor sort of refer a contact to the letter, then when you go, if you finish and you go send via email, you will have an option to send to that doctor. So actually you could do that right away, Kira. <clears throat> so we've got a question from Aaron about a field for the name of parent guardian. One of our clinicians sees a lot of children and letters get addressed to them. Um, instead of the parent. That's a really good point, Aaron. I think we could have a field, even uh, perhaps with what you're talking about, it might be more of a salutation field, something that's like, if we're addressing correspondence for this person, what's the name to use for correspondence? I think we might wanna be really specific to say it's for this purpose here. Um, a question about more than one referrer in patient contacts. Um, I think that'll come, Elizabeth. The, the referrer part is kind of, I don't know, it's not complete. So we, we did put it in there and we had plans to evolve on it and we really didn't get much further on it yet. But I think at the time of revisiting, we will. The only exception to that that you could do right now is if you use our cases feature, you can put a referrer in the case. So you could have a referrer per case as opposed to the one overall referrer on the patient record. So maybe um, that referrer on the patient record would be the original way you got to see them, but then you could have for each case, you know, who's sent it along or where it's come from. And that will also be usable if you're doing any like Medicare billing, for example, it'll be able to grab that referrer from the case uh, to put in as the provider for the Medicare billing. I've got some support from Jeremy here to see the mullet. Uh, maybe a future session, Jeremy. I don't think it's ready to see the world yet. Um, so another one on um, a referrer in patient contacts. Um, oh, to send, a, to send a letter to all of the referrers to update them. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I'd have to have a think about how to implement it. Definitely makes sense. The ability that if you had multiple practitioners that were providing care to a patient of yours, and you wanted to send out an update to them all, I think that's a really good use case uh, that we would need to handle. 
Um, I just need one second. I see my picture's gone black. I will fix that if you give me a moment. I've had this once before and I thought I would learn my lesson, but I've not. And that is to use a fully charged battery on my camera before I start the session. Alright, that should be back and better. I even thought today as I had my, my spare battery, it was on 30% and I should really make sure I update it, but alas, I did not. So Fahad with an upsetting question in the chat here saying he hasn't invested in a gooseneck kettle yet for his pour overs. He uses a standard one. How important is it? It depends a little bit on your, on your skill level, Fahad. Um, because if you can pour it really slow and accurately with a normal kettle, I guess it doesn't matter. But I find um, nearly, nearly impossible um, to, to do an accurate slow pour if you're not using a gooseneck. So the one that I'm using is, is this one here, which is temperature controlled and, and quite an accurate pour. Amy, um, I, I can't uh, confirm anything that you've questioned there about the beanie falling off. So I think I've gotten through um, all of the, well, at least all of the questions aside from sharing the, the mullet, um, all the questions that have come through previously and the ones that have been asked today, um, I'm going to finish up in a moment. Um, if you do have other questions that come up as you're using uh, Clinico generally, then feel free to reach out to our support team. You can do it on the website, you can do it using the in-app help, and they will also have answers to probably most of the things I answered today, and quite likely even better than I do. Um, so feel free anytime, you don't need to wait for a session like this, um, you know, jump in there and ask questions. That said, um, if you don't have some saved up for me, then this will be a pretty boring session, so it's still good you keep some uh, to give me. I guess we'll update um, anyone that's registered for this will be on our sort of um, live streaming list. So we'll let you know when we have uh, another one coming. And I really appreciate everyone coming along and joining and watching and asking the questions in the comments. Uh, see Martina has um, linked a feedback form there as well. We really appreciate if you can spend a couple of minutes and just give some feedback on this session so that we know what we can improve and make sure we're, we're getting some value out to you. So thank you everyone and stay safe and I'll see you next time.